How many has he supplied all your needs? He's given you everything that you needed when you needed it. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on up here, Miss Emerson. Miss Emerson asked me to baptize her, and I, I take this as an honor all the way down, baby. And, um, you know, Jesus didn't start his ministry. Be, be seated right there. There you go. Until he first was baptized in the River Jordan. And baptism is an outward expression of an inward work that Christ lives and dwells in you. Amen? And I find it an honor. I remember when you was a little bitty thing. Now you done growing all up on me and stuff. You can't have all that. Emerson, I am proud this morning to be able to baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. It is an honor. Just like John the Baptist baptized Jesus. John says, I ain't, I'm not even worthy to latch your shoes. Can I tell you something? I'm proud to see the young lady that you're growing up to be. Daddy, would you assist me? Somebody give God praise. I, I, I love it when our young people, are, our young people come and say, uh, I, I want to be baptized. I want to I follow Christ closer. And that's on her accord. I said that was on her accord. I said that was on her accord. start here this morning hallelujah tonight 5 30 movie night everybody's welcome those that are here those that are watching by live stream I'd like to welcome our live stream audience this morning if you will help me in and uh, But tonight at 5.30, we're going to watch a movie. Well, at 5.30, we're going to have ice cream. I've challenged all those that have homemade ice cream makers to make your ice cream and bring it with you, and, and we're, going to, we're going to have uh, i I'll be the sampler. Oh, well, that didn't fly too well, right? And for those that don't, bring ice cream, bring some toppings. Just bring yourself. Bring somebody with you. Amen. We're going to show a movie, uh, A Girl That Believed in Miracles. It's a powerful, powerful movie. If you have not seen it, you know somebody that needs a miracle, let's build that faith. Before we leave today, we're going to be saying goodbye to Miss Kara. And um, so at the end of the service, we're going to take up an all a love offering for her as well. She's moving to Kentucky because her husband, I don't quite know. I don't know if he's GBI, CIA. Or all of that, I don't know, he's a super ninja or something for the military. No, he's in the, he's the military police, I'm just kidding. And he got transferred to Kentucky. And somebody in Kentucky is going to get blessed. I, I don't know about you, but she's been a blessing to us for the last couple of years. And that she has, and we're glad to have her the, the link that God loaned her to us now. It's time for her next journey, next step, another next leg of her journey. Amen. So if you come to receive today, I need you to hold your Bible up and say it with me this morning. This is my Bible. This is God's Word. I believe it, and I choose to receive it. I'm not just a hearer, but therefore a doer. Now plant the Word. And everybody said, 
Amen. We've been in a four-part series called A Way Out. And we get our key scripture from Paul's writing in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 13. He says, no temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. Somebody say faithful with me this morning. God is faithful. He's always faithful even when we're not. God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he also provides, this is our message, a way out. Somebody say a way out. He will always provide a way out so that you can endure it. Father, we come before you today and we say thank you. Thank you. Thank you for making a way out. Thank you that Jesus came and endured the suffering at the cross for each one of us and gave us a way out. And everybody said, amen. Now, see, if you're a Christ follower, this is going to be a, a dynamic message for you. And then there's some that are not, and some watching, and some of you here today, that maybe you're not, and, and it's, you're going to be thinking to yourself, it's a waste of time, and it's a waste of my energy. Why would I want to do that? Matter of fact, you're just old school. You're just a preacher, and that's what it is. Just got them old preacher ways, you know. Well, listen, if you're a Christ follower, you're going to agree with every step today. And everybody said, but it's going to be hard. Amen. How many of you know that when we're weak, he is strong? When, when we will admit that we're weak, that, that's the key is admitting. Because sometimes pride rises up and, and we won't admit that we're weak or we need help or, or maybe that we got something going on in our own life. But see, God can only fix what we're willing to give to him. What we're able to surrender to him, that's the only thing that he can fix. We've talked the last three weeks over temptations. And can I tell you something? As long as you are in flesh form, you will have temptations in your life. Temptations will come. Just because you, you can quote all the Beatitudes and you know the Pentateuch and, and you know all of the b books of the Bible and you can name them by, you know, sing that song. I don't, I've never learned that song. I need to learn that one day because I'll be honest with you, it's hard for me to remember the Bible's in order. The books, come on, all 66 of them. It, it, it's hard to remember them in order, but it don't matter if you can, and you can quote half of the New Testament by heart. Temptation's still coming. It don't matter if you got up this morning and walked on water to get here. Temptation is coming. It don't matter if you got up this morning and you bared a cross upon your back. It's temptation is still coming. It doesn't matter if you got up this morning up from the whipping post and had 39 stripes across your back because temptations are going to come. Somebody said, amen. They're coming. Why? Why do you say it that way, Pastor? Why do you say it with so much passion? Because Jesus himself was tempted in the wilderness by the evil one. And everybody said, amen. Whoo, hallelujah. Hmm. I got a quote here I want us to write down if you're taking notes. We're often weak because we haven't bonded with what makes us strong. We are weak because we, have, we haven't bonded with what makes us strong. What, what is that that makes us strong? We're, we're not bonded to the vine of God's word and of God's will. Our strength comes from the vine. He is the vine and we are the fruit. And we got to be bonded to that. So, so often... Our weakness comes because we're not bonded to that which gives us strength. Bruce Alexander, Alexandria, a professor of psychology in Vancouver, did a study. And he got these little mices. And if I got any animal activists, don't be jumping on me. I didn't do it. He did it. <laughs> and he put them in these cages and he gave them two bottles of water. One of them was just clear, regular water. And the other one, he laced it with cocaine and heroin. Doing a study on addictions. 
And 100% of the mice OD'd and died. 100%. So he thought about it, and he says, you know what? He says, really, I don't think I gave them a fighting chance. You either had this water or you had the one laced. How many of you know that left to our own device, we're going to mess up? When we're left to our own decisions, we're going to mess up. Y'all with me today. But watch. So he decided, you know what, to give them a little more to choose from. So he, he went and he, he, he built a rat park, you know, like Disneyland. I mean, he put the little balls in there where they could turn, and, and they put, he put cheese everywhere, and he put their little houses and, and put their little tunnels and, and all the stuff that little rats love to do. And if it was a male rat, he put a female rat in there so they could go rat do whatever rats do. As we know, they multiply quickly. <laughs> well, my mind just went everywhere. I got to stop. <laughs> and he builds this great thing. So he gives him two bottles of water again, and one of them just clean water, and the other one was laced with cocaine and heroin. To his surprise, not one of the mice OD'd. Not one. Why? Because he gave them what they needed to be strong. He gave them their natural environment. Y'all with me? Sometimes we wonder why we do some of the things that we do. Maybe we got some things that's been in our family through the ancestors, through the generations that we still, we're following suit with it. We recognize it and we see it and we, we don't know why we keep doing it. It's because we're not bonded to that thing that causes us to be strong. And everybody said, we, we talked about last week about what you feed grows and what you starve dies. We talked about starving the flesh. Come on. The fleshly desires. We, we, we want to starve the fleshly desires. Well, this week I want to talk today about feeding our flesh. Starve, uh, feeding our spirit. Starving our flesh and, and feeding our spirit. And everybody said, I mean, you know, if we want our spirit, man, so many people, they work out, they go to the gym, me and Randy, we were here several years ago. We, we decided we're going to go get all buff. Okay. And so we go to the gym. Well, we've been walking quite a bit together and, 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 and was doing pretty good for two old men. So we decided we're going to the gym. Hallelujah. There's stuff that hurts that you didn't know you had. That's all I'm going to say about that. And Randy wasn't no, listen to me, he's got me by a day or two. And, and y'all are supposed to say, that's right. <laughs> he's got me by a day or two. And, and so, I, I mean, I can't let him outdo me. And I remember we was doing leg press one day. And he done lifted his up real high. I'm over there, boy, I'm all that in a bag of chips. And I realized how much weight he had on his versus mine. Oh, no, sir, I got I to gotta up that. No, 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 no. And let me tell you something. I went home for two days. My legs were like rubber. Whoo, they hurt. Amen. Then I got to seeing all those young guys. And we'll leave that right where it is because you've already, you already know the rest of the story. Amen. So. <laughs> oh Jesus. But we will we'll 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 concentrate on working on this physical body. But we'll let our spirit body wither up and die. I'm fixing to give us three things today and I'm gonna I'm gonna challenge you today to work on one. I'm not asking you to work on two. I'm not asking you to work on three. I'm asking you to pick one area in your life to feed your spirit man 
that you know that you know that you know that you need to work on. I don't need you to be Superman. I don't need you to up the weight. Because if you know, listen, if you keep up in that weight, you're going to quit. You'll never get it through. But if you'll work on that one thing. So I'm going to challenge you. At the end of the service, we're, gonna, we're all going to be honest with God today and, and say, this is what I need to work on. So today, if you're taking notes, point number one, to feed your spirit, you need to feed your spirit in prayer. It's just like exercise, physical exercise makes the body stronger. Prayer makes the spirit man stronger. See, see, sometimes people, well, I prayed Sunday when I went to church, so I got mine in for the week. I don't know about you, baby, but I got shotgun prayers. They constantly going off. I'm going to walk up in a, or, or get, a, get in a situation and go, Lord, I need you right now. Right now. I need you now. Lord, what am I going to do now? Help me, somebody. See, see prayer is not just because you've got 45 minutes on your knees. And you went down that list of everybody that was on your list. Uh, listen, uh, prayer doesn't even have to be in, in, in a prayer room. A prayer could be in your car driving down the road. Prayer could be in a board meeting at the, at the bank. Prayer can happen in the bathroom. Prayer can happen. I don't know about you, but I drive every day. I need prayer all day long because some of them folks ain't got no business with a driver's license. They get out there, ain't got nowhere to go. We got, I mean, prayer is, is much more than just, well, we're going to have a hermeneutical prayer and we're going to go down through the Beatitudes and we're going to, and we're going to play, pray like Jesus when he was teaching the disciples to pray. He said, pray like this. Can I tell you something? This is what he tells us today. Just pray. Father, not my will, but thy will be done. When he I love what Jesus said in Matthew 26 and verse 41. Here he is now. He's in the Garden of Gethsemane, and he's getting ready to go and face one of the most gruesome deaths that any man could ever. Him being deity, knowing what was coming, him being man, knew the pain and the suffering that would take place. And Jesus knelt down in the garden. But before he did, he told his disciples, he said, watch and pray. Somebody say, watch and pray. He told them, don't just go over there and take you a nap, although they did. Watch and pray. There's a reason to, that you need to pray. He goes on to say, so that you will not fall into temptation. If we want to beat temptation... Greatest thing we can do first, number one, is pray. Amen? And he says, watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And Jesus, when he taught his disciples to pray, he said, pray like this. Father, help us not to be, to fall into temptation. Come on. Hello. That, that, and that's, I love this. He says, watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. And Jesus says, Father, help us not fall, to fall into temptation. You notice we stumble and we fall into temptation. Nowhere in the Bible does it say that we fall into righteousness. We don't just trip, oh, I'm righteous and I'm holy now. He says, pray so that, so that you will not fall into temptation. Then Jesus, being our example, in the garden, nailed down. He says, Father, if there's any way this cup can pass, if there's any way to do this, please let that happen. But then... As we talked about last week, he prayed a prayer of submission. Not my will. Thy will be done. 
Somebody say amen. I don't know about you, but I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad that he didn't say, well, you know what? Hey, they own their own. They don't want to they don't want to ate the apple. Come on. Mm-mm-mm. How many of you know temptation is strong at times? It, it, it is. It, it's strong. As I said last week, um, how many of you know that sin is fun? And do not teach your children that sin is not fun because that's a lie. Now, I'm going to show of hands. How many know there's fun, there's fun in sin, sinning? All right, I got half the church again. We're fixing to have to have an altar call because either one of two things, you either lying or you didn't do it right. There's fun in sinning for a while. And it always leads to death. And everybody said, amen. So, so my, my day should start with prayer. My day should end with prayer. It should be a prayer all day long. It should be praying without ceasing. And everybody said, prayer is powerful. It was afforded to us by Jesus when he said, I must go, but I'm going to send one to live in you. I'm going to give you a a communication line. And if you're a Christ follower, uh, years ago, we, we don't hear it in church like we used to, but years ago, we always used the the terminology you need to be born again you need to be born again you've already been born of the flesh now you need to be born of the spirit why because then now you're a christ follower now you have an access to the throne of heaven that your prayers will get beyond the ceiling tile that they'll make it all the way to heaven prayer is important in your spiritual growth and your spiritual strength. And as long as you're praying, you won't fall for all the temptation. Number two, if you're taking notes, we need to feed our spirit with God's word. With God's word. The psalmist David says this way in Psalms 119 and 9. And listen, he doesn't pull no punches either. Y'all hear, y'all hear me? I mean, he's straight to the point. How can a young person stay on the path of purity? Well, just by doing everything everybody else is doing. He was asked the question, how can a young person stay on the path of purity? Maybe it's with everything that they're watching on social media. Maybe it's everything that their friends are doing. No, he answers them back, he says, by living According to your word. Somebody say your word. And he goes on to say, I seek you with all my heart. Do not let me stray from your command. I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. You know, that's probably... When I first got saved, that was probably one of the, I, I don't talk about this part of my life very much because it, it was real hard and difficult for me when I first got saved because I couldn't read very well. But by the power of the Holy Spirit, I said, God, I need to be able to read your word. There was a conviction down in me to read your word. I'd get home sometimes 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning, be sitting at the kitchen table when my kids get up to go to school, reading God's Word over and over and over and over. Not so I could brag on how much I'm reading this Word because I knew it was power that I needed. It was food to my spirit. Y'all with me? It was food to my spirit. Listen, you don't even have to be able to read nowadays. We have no excuse. What do you mean, Pastor? The Bible's on your phone. If it ain't, you ought to download it. And if you can't read it, it'll read it to you. And the church said, so, so there's, you know, 
Pastor, I mean, I can't even memorize them scriptures and stuff like you do. Don't lie. You know every word, every lyric to every new every song on Taylor Swift's new album. And you got the moves to go with it. So you will memorize what is important to you. And everybody said. So now when the enemy comes, the word of God is our the only offensive weapon we have. The helmet of salvation is for defense. The breastplate of righteousness is defense. The shield of faith is defense. Shot at our, our shot uh, with the preparation of the peace of gospel is defense. You got the belt to hold your britches up. It's defense. The only offense is the weapon we have is the word of God. It's the sword of the word of God. So when the enemy comes, now, now I've hid it in my heart. So now when he comes, when that temptation comes, says you ain't good enough. You ain't never going to have nothing. You ain't never going to be nobody. Who do you think you are? I am the righteousness of God. Why? Because the Bible says I'm the head and I'm not the tail. I'm above and I'm not beneath. I'm more than a conqueror. Everything I put my hands to shall prosper. And everywhere I put the soles of my feet, I got power and dominion. Y'all with me today? So when the enemy comes, says, no, you, you, you done messed up. If everybody knew what you said or what you was thinking or what you had done, I'm more, I'm more than a conqueror in him. I'm an overcomer by the blood of the lamb and by the words of my testimony. When I'm weak, he is strong. God's strength is made perfect in me. Woo! God is faithful. He is faithful every time. See, Jesus himself, after a 40 day fast we asked somebody to fast today <gasps> I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what pastor I got this I'm going to pass I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fast calf liver and onions and I'm going to fast turnip green after 40 days of fasting how many of you know that the enemy will always come to your weakest point he knows your threshold Jesus himself was tempted in every way. When he was in the wilderness and the enemy come to him and said, Look here, if thou be the son of... See, he didn't even know. The devil don't know nothing until we tell him. If thou be the son of God, turn these stones into a loaf of bread. Jesus reached out there and grabbed that sword of offense and said, For it is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. See, he could have turned that stone into a loaf of bread with a log of butter running right down the middle of it. But he didn't. Y'all with me? Then he carries him up to the high temple, the high pinnacle, and says, Now, jump off. Let your angels, let's see your angels go to work now. He reached in there and he grabbed that sword of offense and he pulled it out. The word of God, it said, for it is written. Somebody say it with me. For it is written. It is written. It is written. Thou shalt not tempt thy Lord God. Yeah, it is written. Somebody say it is written. It is the written word of God that is the, the answer every time. Then he goes off and says, I tell you what, see all this? It's yours. All I want you to do is bow down to me. Well, you know, Jesus was in, 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 in a former man full of humility. Because I won't be honest with you, if I'd have been Jesus at that point, I'd have said, sucker, I know, it's mine. My daddy created it. But no, he didn't do that. He reached and got that sword. And he says, for it is written. I shall serve no one but my God all the days of my life. For it is written. It is written. Somebody say it's written. It is written. It is written. I will not bow down to you. I'm not going to bow. Come on. 
I'm not going to bow now. And what I love about the whole armor of God, there's actually nothing that covers your backside. So if you get right up in the middle of everything and you get, get a little nervous and you turn and run, remember there's nothing behind you to protect you. The church said, now I'm going to hit one now that's going to be a little sore to some people. But I think it's probably one of the biggest ones. We need to feed our spirit with prayer. We got to feed our spirit with the word of God. See, the word of God is like a two-edged sword. It cuts asunder all the way to the marrow, it says. It'll cut and it'll divide. The word of God, the truth of the written word of God is more powerful than any thing you got going on in your life it doesn't matter what your generations have done it doesn't matter what your families are it don't matter where you came from it don't matter what you look like it don't matter how how much money you got the word of god is final authority in every situation in our life hallelujah yes lord oh yeah i got here with plenty of time number three Feed your spirit with the right people. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15 and 33, he says, do not be misled. So if he says you do not be misled, that must mean you can be misled. Amen? He says, do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. Come back to your senses as you ought. And stop sinning. Somebody saying, stop sinning. Listen, if I got over here, I was back there, but I ended up over here where I didn't belong because I let somebody mislead me and carry me out. All I got to do is stop and turn and stop sinning. Pastor, you're talking a lot about sinning. I ain't never, I, I've heard more about sin in the last four weeks in this church than I have in four years. Because we're not a church of rules. We're a church of grace and of mercy. The thing is, if I got misled and I got led over here, then we can hit that hyper grace button. Some of y'all been here on, all through the series, you'll know. Then you can find that hyper grace button and go to hitting it. And everybody said, do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. Come back to your senses as you ought and stop sinning. I think we all ought to all write this phrase down here. And we need to memorize it. Bring it to memory. Being with the wrong people never helps you do the right thing. Being with the wrong people never helps you do the right thing. I mean, if you're trying to deal with alcoholism, you don't need to go hang out with the ones at the bar on Friday night. They're probably not going to help your addiction. Come on. I found myself, and I talked about this a while back, back to being negative all the time, complaining. Spirit of complaining. Man, I, 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 I could hear the words that my daddy would say. You would, you would complain if you was hung with a new rope. I was complaining about everything. I was complaining about my complaining. And I had that stop one day and ask God. I said, God, what am I? What? Then I realized it was the circle of people that was around me at that time. Stop and listen. Look on Facebook what they're posting. Negative, 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 negative. You're not going to be positive in a negative world, y'all. The people you surround yourself with, they should be people that are lifting you up and helping you reach that spiritual goal and your maturity in your life. Come on. So sometimes we gotta take a we gotta take a friend check. We got to take, even if it's family, we have to take a check. 
Hallelujah. I mean, if you're trying to stop cussing and you're hanging around, every, everybody you hang around is just second nature for them to cuss, you're not going to stop cussing. If you're trying to stop gossiping and everybody that you hang around is just gossiping, you're not going to stop gossiping. You're not going to get set free of drugs in a drug house. Sometimes we got to take a look at who we're allowing in our circle. Watch. I thank God I've got a couple of strong people in my life. I allow them to mentor me without them mentoring me. Does that make sense? Everybody needs accountability. See, everybody needs accountability. They need a friend. And then I I realize not everybody's got that friend that they can be real to. I got one that I can be totally honest. When I call them, this is the words I say when I start. All right, I'm calling you as your friend today. Not your pastor. And they don't judge me when I say, guess what I was thinking about today? Or what I did today? Or what I was thinking about doing? And this would be one of their replies. Now, this is about the third time. Don't you think you need to evaluate what's going on? Maybe you need to evaluate. See, everybody needs sometimes that spiritual Discipline. I found that most people can't take discipline. You think they can. And they say they want it. Then you give it to them and then they run. Do not be misled. Drug away. Watch who you're hanging out with. They'll cause you to sin. But most of the time, pride won't let somebody be real. Oh, no. I'm pastor. I can't can't be real. I have learned that you don't let everybody right up in your close proximity. This I found. And it's biblical, y'all. See, we always talk about the 12 disciples that Jesus had. Jesus had over 70 disciples. He had 12 that he pulled up into a into his close circle. But then he had three that he had in his inner circle. There's a, there's a purpose for that. He wasn't letting everybody speak into his life and so into his life. And everybody said, amen. So, so when we get to that place, if we want spiritual strength and spiritual growth in our life, we're going to have to starve the flesh, and we're going to have to feed the spirit. We're going to sp- we're gonna have to feed the spirit with one of three things because it's a diet that we have to have. See, we have to have air or we die. We have to have water or we die. We have to have food or we die in the natural Our spirit man dies if we don't have one of the three things. Prayer. Come on. The word of God. We got to have it. We've got to feed our spirit man with the word of God. With prayer. Then we got to watch this group of people we let. We need a social network friends that help us grow in the Lord and not tear us down. I don't know about you, but maybe you're here today and maybe God's not convicted you of any three. Maybe your prayer life is struggling. Maybe your time devoted to the Word of God is struggling. Maybe your friends have caused you to to start straying. Talking to somebody online as well. Maybe maybe your friends have caused you to stray some. And God is saying you need to get back to feeding the spirit man. 
I don't know about you, I want to be strong enough in the spirit that when the enemy comes, I'm able to overcome the temptations of the wiles of this world. See, I can't have the offensive weapon of the word if I'm not going to water it with prayer. If I'm not going to take the time to, to put the word of God in. And if I'm not going to step back and look at my environment around me. Come on. So I can tell you what's going on at your house. Give me your kids for about 10 minutes by themselves. I had a kid recently, well, in the last several months. Man, just popped off a cuss word, just pew, like it wasn't nothing. Didn't even think nothing about it. Didn't even, didn't even act like it was a big deal. Only thing I could do, I couldn't, I didn't need to pray for that one. I needed to pray for the parents. I needed to pray for the parents. Because you're doing that in front of that child, that's where he heard it from. Watching our social system of friends. Now, I'm going to ask you, I told you in the beginning when we started, I'm going to ask at the end of the service, and I'm going to ask you by a show of hands, how many in here would say, Pastor, mine is prayer. I need my prayer life to be stronger. If you will, raise your hand. Amen. And it's okay. All right. How about, Pastor, I need to be more in the word of God. I need more of the word of God in. See, that was a bigger one. I figured that was. How do I do that? How do I do that? I'm glad you asked. There's, we live in a time. I remember when I got saved. I, I used to, when I especially study for a message. Oh, my God. I had 15 books. I had the concordance is about that thick. In order to go find out what the Greek or Hebrew meaning of that word was. And. Then you had to go dig through all of these. You had to write them down and all that. Nowadays, man, I got everything I need right here real fast, real quick. I, matter of fact, my Bible, when I, when I open it up and I see a word, I, I want to know what the meaning is. I just touch it, and it tells me the meaning. Then if I don't even have to pronounce it. I can hit it again, and it will pronounce it for me. That is cool, y'all. I, I mean, listen, I slander some of the Hebrew and Greek words. Y'all know what I'm talking about because you do the same thing. I mean, some of them words, they, they, especially when they say it, well, isn't, that ain't the way it's spelled. No, it's not the way it's spelled. They, they have a whole different language of their own. It's not spelled that way, but that's what it comes, sounds out to me. Now, I mean, the Word of God is so easy for us. I see everybody running around, even the older people now, with, the, with their ear pods in. And you have the Word of God going. And then what happens is you start building faith inside. Paul said in Romans 10, 17, For faith cometh but by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Somebody say, by the Word of God. By the Word of God. Hearing. So faith is being built when we're putting the Word in. Maybe you ought to turn Taylor Swift off a little bit and put on the Word of God. You can get all of our messages on YouTube. Man, you can hear some amazing music. We are blessed with. Y'all give God praise for that. Okay, amen. So all of y'all that answered, number one, that you need more prayer to feed your spirit, man. And all those that said you need more time in the Word of God. I'm going to ask the most crucial one. How many went in here say you maybe need a little better quality of friends around you? Come on, amen. Yes. Okay. I want y'all to stand to your feet. We're going to pray. Mm. This is how we're going to pray today. We're going to do just what all three of those said to do. We're going to pray 
so that one won't fall into temptation. But we're going to pray the Word of God. And then we're going to ask the Holy Spirit to check us with every head bowed and every eye closed. Father, you know our hearts. You know that we're here today to give you praise. Father, you know those that said they need a more of a prayer life with you. Your word says we have not because we ask not. We ask in faith today that you open up our calendar to give us more time. And for each and every one that says they need more time in your word, there's some today saying, I can't read very well. I can't do this very well. I can't memorize very well. Holy Spirit, we ask that you, God, get all the praise and the glory as you sow into their life. As they open your word up, we ask for Rhema to come out and jump out on them. And Father, right now, for each and every one that needs to take a step back and look at what their surroundings are, their circle of people, their circle of friends, Holy Spirit, do what only you can do, and we give you praise in advance. And everyone said, amen. Y'all may be seated if you can. If you receive that for your word today, yes, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Give him the ovation, for he is worthy. Hallelujah. Miss Kara. Don't you make me cry. Well, I'm going to do that. Oh, Lord. Miss Kara is going to be taking a journey. Hallelujah. After service, we're going to um, go to the cafe. And for anybody who want to love on Miss Kara for a minute before you go. Let her know we're going to miss her. And we're glad that she's part of what everything that we've had going on for the last few years. And going to miss them two uh, not head kids of hers. They are. They're, they're good kids, though. My God, they're good kids. They have done a very good job, her and her husband. So if everyone would stand their feet and place their hands forward, I want to pray for Kara for the next leg of her journey as we release her from here and release her into the care of God. Father, we come before you today. We ask for your anointing to follow this young lady, lead her and guide her. We know that right now the church is sitting there praying today for this lovely lady to come in and lead them in worship. We ask right now that you lead her and guide her and her family to that place where you would have them. And, God, we just give you the praise. We ask that you keep your hands of protection upon them. And that, God, that you get all the praise and the glory. And we thank you. Fathers, we missed and going to have a void here at LifeSpring. We know that you'll fill that void. But we trust in you. But, Father, we ask right now that you just give them peace and peace that surpasses all understanding, a safety on their journey. And, Father, until we see her again, every time she comes to Albany, she's going to let the, light the house up, and we give you praise for it in advance. In Jesus' name, and everybody said amen. Amen. <laughs> we, um, we, we know moving, even though the military does pays a lot of it, We'd like to present you with this today for, for your dedication and commitment. What I love about Kara, she's been a team player from get-go, and it ain't, it ain't a show about me. Never has been. I, I'm going to ask our ushers to come up, and I've asked her to sing her last song out and uh, sing her way out of here.
She sung her way in. She needs to sing her way out. Amen. And we're going to take up a special offering for Kara as they move. You know it gets expensive. And she had no idea I was going to do this. So y'all just bless her and love on her. And she'll be in the cafe. Got a few cupcakes back. You know, we're going to eat junk. And don't forget tonight at 530, ice cream and movie. Love you. I will see you there. <laughs>